Oh, she had a puzzle for us. Back to work with my magic on the grid again? I've been cranking them out extra fast, so I, they're even more now than ever. Fortunately, just like before, I can't even get two of them to cook up the same size. Oh, pancake puzzle. 84 pancake stacks, three. I like that sound effect. Uh, hint number one. Having trouble? Just follow the hints given to you in pancake stacks, too, as if you remember them. This is for the last hint you're going to get for this kind of puzzle, so it would be a waste to spend another hint coin here. Hint number two. Looks like you went and spent that hint coin anyway. Must be nice having hint coins to burn. Okay then, here's a little fun fact for you. These pancake puzzles are based on a puzzle called the Tower of Hanoi, which can be solved using a basic concept in computer science known as recursion. Sure, it's not much of a hint, but it is interesting stuff, isn't it? Hint number three. Well, look at that. You spent yet another hint coin. All right, money bags. Time for more fun facts. Edward Lucas, the man who thought up the Tower of Hanoi puzzle, introduced the puzzle saying that it was based on an Indian myth detailing the creation and destruction of the world. Though the myth is quite fascinating, many people believe Lucas fabricated it. So that was the one I was thinking of when I was like, it's the funniest puzzle in the game, or funniest hints in the game, so... Diabolical Box is just like overall sassy with a lot of these hints I've noticed, so I'm glad I uh, include them in all these LPs. But anyway, let's get to work. La la la! I guess you could say that puzzle was a piece of pancake. No puzzle unsolved. Yummy. Did you know it could be solved in as few as 31 moves? Yes, I did. Wonderful. I've never seen someone who could handle pancakes with such a delicate touch. If anyone else tried to stack them like that, they'd be buried in a mountain of pancakes right now. Well, that's not really a bad thing. Oh, hey, this guy wants tea now. Gregorio, who always introduces himself. At least I remember his name. Uh, he wants number eight. That's a refreshing cup of tea. Of course, I'll just move my knight over to A5. See how little tea can work wonders. You've already found your next move. As my wife saying thanks, here's a little factoid for you, Sonny. In the Hurston Museum, you can find books with the chess strategies used by art aristocrats of the past. The peculiar thing is now that no new strategies have been developed in the last 50 years. It's almost like time has stopped. However the heck that's going to be useful, I have no idea. But we're going to want to head in here and take a photo, because that's totally legal to do in the museum and get out of camera. First one is the sleeve, which is gold in one picture and not in the other. And now to test my theory. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Second one is right here, which has a different design than the painting in the other picture. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. And finally, the last one is this, which has different amounts of stuff in the display case. Consider this puzzle solved. Huh. Wonderful. And the puzzle is hidden under the display case. How wonderful. 
Not the tea set. Cool, I found a hidden puzzle. I ran out of ways to word that sentence. Box of books. The box shown below has a height, width, and depth of 30 inches. Within this box, you'd like to place as many books as possible. Each book is 20 inches wide by 20 inches long by 10 inches thick. How many books can you pack into the box? Books can only be placed in the box in the closed position, but you can position each book however you like inside the box. Hint number one. If all you had to do was to solve this puzzle was count how many books you could stack in the box before it fills up, it wouldn't be much fun. You'll need to think creatively and in three dimensions to solve this one. Hint number two. The bottom of the box measures 30 inches by 30 inches. Each book is 20 inches by 20 inches, so you could really only fit one if the if you place it flat. But if you do that, you'll be left with 10 extra inches on one side. Say, isn't that the exact same size as the thickness of one book? Hint number three. If you place the three books upright in the box and use two more to fit with the gaps, uh, with what gaps you can, you'll still have a good chunk of wasted space on the, your hands. Fitting the books together in a space efficient way is the utmost importance in solving this puzzle. So the solution is that we can only pack six books into this box. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. Very nice, thanks. That one was a tough one, if you say so, Luke. Up next, we're headed um into the watchtower. Uh, this is like a stinking Goompa Pa side quest all up in here. It's all because I didn't figure out how to fix the camera, or that I didn't know I had all the pieces yet. How wonderful! Oh, now you want tea, Mr. Snobby Butt Munch? Uh, his name's Duke. Whatever. It's weird that I have a character named Duke when we have a character named Luke, and he looks exactly like Luke, and there is also a Duke who gets mentioned in the story. But he's a Duke title, but not a Duke name. Uh, whatever. Just going to give him... Uh, number six, the bitter fruit. Of course, he'd like something bitter, because he's a bitter snob. I gotta give it to you, this you know how to brew, mister. Oh, is this? Let me drop a little tip on you. Stay away from talking about f paranormal stuff in the town. Ever since that rumor started about Full Sense being cursed, everyone's been freaked out. And guess what we're gonna continue doing? What was this tower ever used for, anyway? It just showed us the castle in the distance. First one is the mirror, which is cracked in this image and not in the other. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. Second one is Second one is right here. There is a spilling liquid out of the this bottle in one image and not in the other. And now, to test my theory. Ha! Huh, wonderful! Third one's supposed to be right here, but I can't tell what's different about the two images, so I'm just gonna put it right here and call it a day. Just leave it to me! Apparently it's there, I can't see it though. Mages, apprentice strikes again! Did they tell you? Nope, it's just there, I guess. And that's also where the hidden puzzle is. You say you struck gold with the hidden puzzle, okay. 119, the fake coins. Hopefully it's not fake gold you struck, Luke. There are 10 coins in each of the five bags below. One of these bags is filled with fake coins that are lighter than the real ones. A real coin weighs 10 units, but a fake coin is one unit lighter. If you're using a scale that can register up to 200 units, what is the fewest number of times you could use the scale to find the one bag filled with fake coins? Hint number one, the bag of fake coins contains only fake coins 
each of them, it's a typo, there's no space between that each and the comma, each of them one unit lighter than a real coin. So you could take one coin out of each bag and weigh them each in one turn using the scale five times. But that wouldn't make a very interesting puzzle, would it? If you say so. Hint number two, think about how to accomplish your goal in less than five weightings. If, you're, if you tried to weigh all the bags at once, you would go over the scale's measuring capacity. Hint number three, hint two had the idea of weighing all the bags at once. There are 10 10 unit coins in each of the five bags for a total of 500 units, but one bag contains fake coins, so the weight is actually less than that. Perhaps the key to that solving this really is to weigh all the bags at once in a sense. So the solution is that you only need to use the scale da, 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 one time. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. Oh my god, these are annoying. Only four more to go though. Made you break a sweat, okay. Next one's in the mine, see you in a minute. Okay, the mine entrance, what do we got? First one... Um... Again, I don't see the difference, but it's right here, apparently. Hmm, let's see if this works. Piece of cake! Uh, the second one is right here. There's no bush here, but there is in the other image. Hmm. Let's see if this works. Piece of cake. And the third one is um, right here. There is no stick coming out of this cart right here. But there is in the other one. Just leave it to me. Apprentice strikes again. I did it. I'm so proud of myself. Uh, it's right there. I don't know why I keep on checking. It's always in the third one. Professor, I think I've stumbled upon a hidden puzzle here. You're really stretching, Luke. Number 66, the loaded box. The box shown below is fitted with a lock consisting of two dials. You can't turn the blue dial, but when you turn the red dial, the blue dial moves an equal amount. To see the relationship between the two dials, you turn the red one from its original position, as shown below. In order to open the lock, you must turn the blue dial to 3, 6, 4, and finally 1, in that order. Since you can't turn the blue dial directly, that what numbers must you turn, uh, must you turn the red dial to in order to produce the desired numbers on the blue dial? Hint number one. When the red dial reads zero, the blue dial reads five. When the red dial reads three, the blue dial reads two. As stated in the puzzle, the distance the blue dial moves is equal to the distance the red dial moves. When the red dial moves from zero to three, the blue dial moves from five to two. Read that last sentence again and think about what it says about the dial's relationship. Hint number two. Did you catch on what the hint one was trying to tell you? The red and blue dials turn the exact same amount, but as you may have noticed, as the numbers on one dial turn in one direction, the numbers on the other dial turn the other way. Hint number three. When you turn the red dial, the blue dial moves the same amount, only in the opposite direction. So all you need to do is, const is construct a quick table to show that how the values on the red dial correspond to other values on the blue dial. Try writing up the, uh, up the table using the memo function if you like, or just look it up if you want. So the solution, just making sure I don't have to click anything this time, is the red dial needs to be turned to two, seven, one, and four. And now to test my theory. Very good. I apologize if this episode's kind of boring. I'm gonna try and like no uh, cut the beginning footage in the previous step and put it into the previous episode so that this episode is solely for the camera stuff in case you just wanted to skip it. And just so you can find all that info in one easy place. And so this episode is insanely long. That was no picnic. Okay, sure. Next one is... Um... It's where we found the mushroom. Okay. That was this way, I believe. I 
I think I saw this on my way out, actually, so here you go. Photograph number seven. This one only has two mushrooms when the other image has three. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Uh, there's a stump right here when there isn't a stump in the other image. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. And the third one is right over here. This uh, bunch of leaves is bigger than the other one on the other image. This should do the trick. Huh, wonderful. Not gonna examine the photo this time because I know where it is. Watch it not pop up unless I actually like examine the photo. Oh look, I found a hidden puzzle. Why don't you let Leighton find the hidden puzzles for once, Luke? A starry sky. Why don't we rewrite the stars? Say you were made to be mine. Nothing can keep us apart. Cause you are the one I was meant to find. It's up to you and it's up to me. No one could say what we get to be. So why don't we rewrite the stars, changing the world to be ours tonight. All I want is to fly with you. All I want is to fall with you. So just give me all of you. It feels impossible. It's not impossible. And Say that it's it. possible. Switching it up a bit. Woo, that wasn't easy. Yeah, it wasn't. Have you seen those outtakes where they slam into each other? Okay, up next is actually in Granny Riddleton's shack, which is an unusual location, but I guess it's iconic. Let's head back there. There you go. And God darn it, Sulu, I hate you. Grab that. Camera. Let's go. We're so sick and close. Oh my god. Oh, what do we got? Uh, the, this floor is different in the two images. Just leave it to me. That was almost too easy. Uh, the chimney's different in the two images. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. And finally, uh, the branches are a bit different in the two images. Hmm, let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. And there you go. Let's go ahead and examiones. I spy a hidden puzzle. Was number 129, the Slobbish Mole. In the UK, it's called the Messy Mole, but Slobbish Mole sounds more British than the other one, so okay. On the edge of a forest lives a particularly messy mole. His burrow is so clogged with trash that eventually he has to tidy up. However, being lazy, he decides to clean his place while doing the least work possible. In order to pick up all the trash in his tunnel without passing through any one tunnel twice, which of the holes, A through G, should the mole start cleaning from? While moving through any tunnel twice as forbidden, he could pass through any junction between tunnels as often as he wants. You know, it'd probably be less work to just clean up your entire stinking tunnel as opposed to like making a puzzle for yourself and having to solve it and figure out what is quite literally the least amount of work that you would need to do. Because the work you would need to put in to create this puzzle and solve it in the first place is probably a lot. Anyway, hint number one. Use the memo function to trace out potential courses the mole could follow. Hint number two. Do you see the little T intersection just above the hole F? That's where the mole will end up when he's picked up the very last piece of trash. Find a course that lets him conclude his cleaning at that location. Hint number three. Search for a hole that leads to an odd number of separate routes. 
The solution is that he should start cleaning from hole C. And now to test my theory. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That was a lot of work. Uh, the last one actually might be in the tower. I don't think we have access to this one yet. It might be in the mines, but I don't recognize it. I'd have to go back and check. And on my way out of there, these two characters both want tea. Hopefully they're the last two characters that actually want tea in this stinking game. Uh, this is Lila. She wants... Uh, let's find out. Oh, and by the way, uh, Luke and Layton, who wanted tea in the menu and we got hint coins from, they actually count towards this, so be sure to do that, otherwise you won't unlock the reward at the end of this. Uh, number four, which is Root Remedy. Give that to her. Let's see, what do you got for us? You completely recovered now? Not exactly. Uh, chills are gone, but now I got a cramp from all that shivering. Ow, ow, ow. Something's moving behind your shoulder over there. I don't see anything back there. Oops, it was probably just a trick of the light. Tee hee. That seems to happen a lot to people in full sense. Anywho, uh, never mind you all that. Thanks so much for helping me out, I mean. Okay. It, you don't want tea anymore? Because I gave her tea first, you don't want tea anymore. God darn it. I go back down and go back up. You don't want the tea anymore. Are you kidding me? Give me a second. Once we get all the tea locations... There we go. I'm going to try and get all the tea locations done as well in this episode, and then we're going to be done. Oh, what was your name? Maris? Naris? Uh, let's see. Uh, the name is Clarice in the UK version. Whatever. Uh, give them number seven. The Dream Spice. Hey there, really nice. Really is something a little mysterious about this. Good tea. Tastes good job. Okay, whatever. I can't read. Uh, oodles of ghost watching spots. I'm creeped out enough already, but thanks anyway, I guess. Are we done? God darn it. Uh, let me look up to see how many more tea people were missing. This guy finally wants tea. I kept on checking on him every now and again throughout the game, and he never wanted it. I'm singing doppelganger. Go ahead and give him number eight. If we can, if we just keep on going through all this dialogue. Uh, give him number eight. That's good tea. Jeff seems restored and cheerful. I seem awfully worked up, mister. That can't be good for you. Listen to me, boy. You can't underest underestimate vampires. They're cunning creatures. You thought we were vampires, but yet you accepted a drink from us. Don't sound very smart there, Jeff. Hey, just like me. Uh oh, over here! Sulu made a sneeze that I was about to do disappear. How wonderful. Up next is Gringo, who wants T number 12. And hey, isn't that the Leighton Elixir? Yes, it is. He wants the good old Leighton blend. His beverage dreams came true. Oh, now that's a legendary tea. The flavor almost moved me to tears. To tears? I aim to please, sir. Uh, not much, but let me share this puzzle with you. Okay, we actually get a puzzle for this one. Number 94, the mystery cube. Uh oh, is this a sliding puzzle? Uh, it's called the puzzling cubes in uh, UK. The diagram that this little guy's thinking about has been folded into eight tiny cubes, which in turn have been combined to build a larger cube. One of the eight small cubes has led the letter of each of its faces erased. The big cube is constructed in such a way that each small cube's face that isn't visible is pressed against the fence of another cube containing the same letter. Knowing this, can you figure out what letter belongs on the face the arrow is pointing to? Your answer will be one letter, A through F.
Uh, hint number one. The answer to this puzzle won't simply pop up into your head when you make some key realization. You need to work your way to it. Three different cubes are touching three different faces of the cube in question. Find the letters that must be on the, those faces of the unmarked cube. Hint number two. If the unmarked cube has its faces restored to it, all four letters on the right side of the big cube would be C's. Note how all four C's don't point the same way. Hint number three. Did you figure out which three faces the unmarked cube were hidden? They are A, D, and E. So the solution is that the letter B belongs on the face. And now to test my theory. And there we have it. I just have what it takes to get the bot to the bottom of what's going on in town. I don't think I've got much off for you in the way of help, but I'll be rooting for you. Okay, another puzzle taken care of. We're getting really close to the end right here. Yeah, 125 puzzles solved. Supposedly there's over 200 in this game though, isn't there? No, just 150. There's 153. We are getting real close to the end here. Up next is Hopper. I thought I gave him tea already, but apparently not. Uh, he wants. He also wants the latent elixir. Everyone wants a piece of the old latent maista. Like a light and smiles every time when he wants to give someone tea. He's always so excited to please. Or I guess eager to please is the way the saying goes. I'm sure you had it in you, but you really came through for me here. Thanks, buddy. Glad to be of assistance, my good man. You're a smart one, but you're not the first clever guy to visit this town. We used to get loads of them. Just a little while back, an old man from London came through here. He said he was an archaeologist. He played cards and shot the breeze. He was in town researching something or another. I wonder if he ever found what he was looking for. That sounds peculiar. I actually don't know what that's in reference to. Jesus Christ, Sulu! Okay, both these guys want tea. We got Sammy and whatever her name is. That is like super irrelevant all the time. Opal. Oh, what do we got here? What do you want, old buddy, old pal, old pole? Uh, we're getting very close to the end here. She wants number 11, the cinder flower. And then... Just a few weeks ago, the contents of my father-in-law's will were presented by his lawyer. However, the way he demands uh, his property to be divided is simply baffling. In what sense, madam? The specifics are written up like a strange riddle. Until we can decipher it, no one gets anything. A riddle? Don't you mean a puzzle? A wealthy... Is this a... No, it's not a sliding puzzle. A wealthy land baron passed away, leaving his land to be divided... Um, on his sons. A section of his will is written below. I want my four boys to each receive a parcel of property containing an orchard, a house, a pond, and an open field. Everyone should receive the same amount of land. Use your stylus to draw the lines that separate each son's plot of land. Wasn't she in the will? I don't know why she isn't involved in this, but whatever. Hint number one. There are 16 squares of land and four people to divide it among, so every person should receive a parcel of land consisting of four squares. Oh, four square. Hint number two, draw a line right down the middle of the map from the top to bottom. Hint number three, next, lay down the same boundaries so that no two houses are positioned in the same parcel of land. The solution, ooh, that looks kind of simple. Just draw a big old line right here, and then do that. I think we're good. Better be good. Consider this puzzle solved. Let's get all uneven right here at the end after an hour, 13 minute recording would be really crummy. No puzzle unsolved. Uh, but yeah, we're going to finish that up. Now with that everyone has the same amount of land, they can finally stop grumbling. Oh, happy day. Very good. And Sammy Thunder still wants his tea. Uh, this running around, uh, he also wants number 11, the Cinder... Uh, cinder flower. Let's go ahead and give it to him. <laughs> like I would even had like his little text in there. 
Uh, top it up. My shoulders feel loose and ready to tackle whatever guitar solos come my way. Uh, let's see. Rock fans of the future. Okay. And then the one I was trying to activate was this girl up here. She should want tea eventually, but I still gotta go back and forth and back and forth. There you go. Her name is Joni. Uh, she wants number two, the kid's drink, the Oasis Berry, because she's a kid. There you go. Serve it. Who knew tea could be so yummy? Joni grins. Joni grins. Why? Whatever. Hmm, you know, that actually wasn't half bad. Actually, it was a pretty tasty. Thanks a million. That's the first sweet thing I've had since Mom made me give up candy. So she says it rots your teeth. And with that, we are now a Tea Master! Layton's challenges, the Tea Master's house has been added to your map. Oh boy! We are finally done. The only thing left is a single camera minigame. Oh, look at Layton coming out of the little teacup right there. The only thing left to do is the single camera minigame that is in the castle. After that, we are done with the minigames. Next time on Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, we will begin the final chapter of our journey. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Solo!